This is a folk tale that originated in Brazil about how the monkey became a trickster. It all starts with this beautiful garden filled with fruit trees as far as your eye can see. There were oranges and apples and plums and pears, anything you could imagine. There was a cobblestone path and butterflies and flowers. It was quite a peaceful place. Now there were also beasts in this garden, but not like monsters, more like monkeys and bears and zebras and tigers. These beasts were allowed to eat fruit from all the trees that they wanted. It's how they got their lunch and their dinner. All they had to do was say the tree's name and use the word please. So if the bear wanted a fig, he would go, oh fig tree, oh fig tree, may I please have a piece of your fruit? He would reach up, grab a fig, and eat his lunch. And if the lion wanted an orange, he would go, oh orange tree, oh orange tree, may I please have a piece of your fruit? He would reach up, grab an orange, and have his lunch. Now, at one end of the garden, there was this little cottage. It had a brick fireplace, a cobblestone path, vines growing up the side, and pink flowers all around. There was also a rocking chair out front where the old lady who lived there sat, and she knew the names to all the fruit trees in the garden. So if an animal ever forgot the name to a fruit tree and he wanted some food, he would walk to the old lady's cottage and say, old lady, can you please tell me the name of this fruit tree? And she would say, of course I can tell you the name of this tree. And they would go get their lunch. Now at the other end of the garden, opposing from the cottage, there was the biggest tree you've ever seen. It was so green and beautiful and there was pink fruit on it that smelled better than anything you've smelt in your life. The only problem was this tree had a complicated name that no animal could ever remember by the time it got to the cottage to ask the old lady and walk down the cobblestone path to the fruit tree, they would forget it and not be able to eat. The monkey was determined though. He wanted this pink fruit off this, um, off this unreachable tree. And the monkey would have an idea. He walked to the old lady's cottage and brought his guitar because he was so good at it. Asked the old lady, can you please tell me the name of the big fruit tree? And the old lady said, of course I can tell you the name and whispered it in his ear. The monkey then made a tune to this complicated name, played his guitar and sang the tune under his breath all the way to the big tree at the end of the garden. He was so proud of himself, he remembered the name. So he yelled up to the tree and said its name and said, may I please have a piece of your fruit? And he reached up and he grabbed a big piece of pink fruit, took a big whiff and bit into it in excitement. Yuck! You should have seen his face. This fruit is bitter and sour. He chucked the fruit in frustration, upset at all the work he had just done, and sat there in disappointment. The monkey had an idea. He wanted the other beasts to feel the disappointment that he had felt. So he walked back to the garden and goes up to the bear and says, oh, big bear, I know the name of the big fruit tree. Come and try it, it's delicious. And the bear went, okay, of course I'll try the big fruit, and walked down to the fruit tree and said, yelled the tree's name and said, may I please have a piece of your fruit. He reached up, grabbed a big pink piece that smelled delicious, bit into it, and yuck, he made the same face as the monkey and chucked it even farther than the monkey had out of frustration. The monkey then went back to the garden and did this with every single animal one by one. He got the lion and the zebra, and the dog and everything in there. Um, the monkey would take them to the fruit tree, watch their face, have this, he would watch them have the same expression that he had and would laugh. This is how the monkey became a trickster. And this is how all the beasts in the garden learned that looks can be deceiving and just because something's pretty doesn't mean it's sweet.